Today I'm going to talk about the individual brakes or the steering brakes, the turning brakes. Yeah, there's lots of different names for them. But if you have only a subcompact tractor or garden tractor, you've probably never experienced these and don't really understand them. We're going to talk about that basic topic today. Let's get started. That's right, this is a basic topic, uh, something that most of you know very well, I understand that. But this time of year especially, there's a lot of new tractor owners, a lot of new tractor operators that really have not experienced uh, some of these features. And if you're upgrading or thinking about upgrading from a subcompact tractor to one of these larger tractors, I think this is a, a topic that's, that's worth understanding. These brakes, there's two of them. They're always side by side. On a traditional gear drive tractor, they are on the right side. And on a lot of hydrostatic tractors now, they've moved them to the left side, like this one. The leftmost brake pedal will stop the left wheel. The rightmost brake pedal will stop the right wheel. Now, when I say stop, it will also, probably a better word would be retard it. I mean, it will, it will slow it down. It will break it, right, so that it, it doesn't spin quite as fast as the other wheel. Without a brake applied, you know, there's a differential in there and whichever wheel has the uh, least amount of resistance will spin. Now I've got this tractor in a little bit of a unique configuration. I uh, just did a, an episode with the aerator. And if you'll notice, we've got a lot of weight on the aerator and we do not have the loader attached. We do not have any front end weight on the tractor. In fact, I can demonstrate just how strong I am at this point. If you look up here, I am so strong that I can pick up the tractor all by myself, right? Ooh. Well, no. It's just that I have so much weight on the rear end that the front end of the tractor is very light. This is a perfect opportunity to demonstrate one of the purposes, or maybe the main purpose, of the individual brakes. And so I think I'll just uh, show that now. So I'm in a scenario where as soon as I press the accelerator just a little bit, my front end comes off the ground. I really don't have any ability to, to steer hardly at all. See, while I'm, you know, I can't steer at all like that, right? Now sometimes I might be able to, you know, go really slow and get it to steer, but really, no, I can't make it steer. So in that scenario is when I use these, and that's why they call them steering brakes. And if I press it at just the right amount, it makes it look like the front wheel's doing all the steering, right? You really, it's kind of magic. So done right, you don't see any back wheel slippage, nor do you see any front wheel slippage. It's just making the uh, tractor turn like you want it to turn. You're seeing a guy drive a tractor around in circles. That deserves a like, doesn't it? Please press that like button. Oh, and if you're new around here, subscribe or follow. We appreciate it. Now again, if I let off that brake pedal, I just go straight. Okay? Now, that's that's first lesson. In this case, I'm making a pass with my aerator and I want to turn square around and go right back down the same path. So in this case, I can press the brake really hard I actually skid those front tires around, and there we go. Okay, one thing I didn't mention is this little silver lever here. I'll drive up to you so you can see it. Almost every tractor I see when I get on it, has this lock lever locked in so that both of these brakes are locked together. That is incredibly frustrating to me, and the first thing I do is unlock it. And I suspect there are a bunch of other people that do exactly the opposite, because that's why I always see it locked in. They claim it's some sort of a safety feature, so if you really want to stop, you can, you know, you can directly stop by hitting both pedals, right? And even if you only hit one, the other one gets applied automatically. Well, that defeats the whole purpose of the individual brakes. 
and I submit I can easily hit both pedals if I just hit both pedals, right? So I, I always unlock that lever so that I can get this value. Some of you are saying, but I've tried that. I've, I've tried hitting the brake pedal and turning, and my front end, it, it, it just slides the rear wheel. It doesn't do anything with the front. That's what's going to happen when you have a heavy load on the front, like a loader, even an empty loader, and no rear ballast, right? Because in that case, the front wheel is heavy enough that even applying the brake, the front wheel is going to control what I'm doing. In this case, most of the weight is on the rear, and so I can readily show it. If you don't have your loader on, or if with your loader you have a huge amount of rear ballast, you can get that kind of a happy medium where you can still steer the tractor by itself where the brakes can help you achieve that goal of steering where you want to go or maybe even steer a little bit tighter, a shorter turning radius, a smaller turning radius than what you would have with just the front wheels. I mean, that's the net result here, right? When I lock this brake, I, I have a very tiny turning radius. Very tiny turning radius. Opinion time. Anytime in a specification when I see turning radius with brakes, I discount it. Because it, it doesn't mean much in the real world. Because if I have a different attachment on, that's going to behave differently. In this case, my turning radius is almost nothing, right, when I've got the brake applied because I've got plenty of weight. I can spin this tire right here. You know, depending on how they measure the radius, it's very, very tight. But if I had a loader on and no rear ballast, my turning radius would be very, very similar to with, without any brake applied. So I always ignore the turning radius with brake specification and I seek to find the one without brake. Sometimes they don't list it. It's kind of frustrating. And even if they do list it, well, go look at our turning radius videos and, you, and you'll get some more detail on that. We'll put a card to one right up here, hopefully a link in the description. So I'm out here in the rocks, it's dry. I, I don't have any complexity to where I'm operating right now. But oftentimes you get in a situation where one wheel is spinning and you don't want that wheel to be spinning. Well, you can apply the brake and that will force. So let's say this wheel is spinning, it's slipping. You can apply this brake and stop that wheel from spinning and force the other wheel to do the work. Sometimes that will help you out of a, a muddy spot. Sometimes that will help you steer. Because a lot of times at the same time that one wheel is slipping and one wheel is pulling, if this wheel's slipping and this wheel's pulling, it's gonna twist your tractor. Well, maybe your steering is not able to control that. Again, you can, you can control which wheel does the spinning with these brakes, right? So the net result is that you have a lot more control of your machine when you use these individual brakes properly. For instance, right now without them, you know, I can't steer at all. That pushed the wrong button. But I, I really can't steer because I'm so light on the front end that my tractor would be ineffective. But with the steering brakes, I'm fine. I don't even really worry about it. Now you might say, what about turning over? Well, I'm not going to turn over. Worst case, I'm going to hit the attachment on the ground. See, it's not that big of a deal. Folks, if you need John Deere parts, go to greenpartsstore.com, use code TTWT and you'll get free shipping. And that will allow you to get parts very quickly, right? It'll take maybe two, maybe three days oftentimes to get those parts delivered to your house. If you have to order a part through your local Deer dealer, most often you have to pay the shipping charge. And you might even have to wait a little bit longer than what you will here. Greenpartsstore.com has a bunch of parts in stock, a lot more than a typical John Deere dealership would because well, they ship all over the country. Check them out, greenpartsstore.com, use code TTWT. Oh, and if you don't know the part number, go to partscatalog.deer.com, put in the model of your tractor, look up your part. The part system is incredibly easy to navigate. Well, I shouldn't say incredibly easy, but it's navigable. 
even a beginner can do it. And you can find your part number, cut and paste that part number, go to greenpartstore.com, and they'll be here before you know it. Now I've been showing one direction. We can go the other direction too. Now in the deer lineup, independent brakes start in the large frame 2Rs. So that would be the 2032 R would be the smallest deer tractor sold today that has uh, brakes. Well, I don't know, the 3025E. I don't think the 3E has independent brakes. I'm embarrassed to say that I don't know if the 3E tractors have individual brakes or not. I'm, I'm certain that the 3D tractors do. Um, their gear drive, and, and I'm certain they do have individual brakes, but I don't know about the three E's, and yeah, I've spent a good bit of time on one. That's, that's kind of embarrassing. Let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll get a hundred comments telling me about the three E braking system. A little of the technology used here, traditionally in a gear drive tractor, they just use some sort of a drum or a disc style brake, you know, all the way back as far as I know, even Farmall tractors, I know all the old Olivers had independent brakes. Now that we're up to the hydrostatic tractors, they kind of use a different approach. And I'm not sure I understand some of that approach, but it's internal to the hydrostat system. I don't think there are brake pads in there and you know where they, where they actually uh, lock up mechanically on, on the brakes, but I could be wrong. Um, discount me on that. I've never actually seen the insides of the braking system on any of these tractors. Why don't they have them on a one series tractor or any other subcompact tractor? I, I would say there's a couple of reasons. Number one is cost. It's going to be more expensive to have the independent braking. Number two I would say is physical space, right? You need a lot of space, well, relatively a lot of space to, to add these, these individual brakes. But I suspect, quite frankly, cost is the number one uh, reason. Having grown up uh, with tractors and all of them having individual brakes, it's probably the biggest feature that I see missing in subcompact tractors. Uh, but what are your thoughts? Do you find individual brakes uh, a feature that you would like to see in even a subcompact tractor? Or do you always leave that locked and you never use them at all? Or maybe you just never understood how they needed to operate. I'd, I'd like to hear your feedback on that below. Also, have I missed anything? Is there, is there some aspect uh, of independent brakes that, that I have missed? You know, you do notice a, a little loss of power when you apply the brake to one side. Uh, it won't have as much power overall um, because, you know, you're, you're trying to stop some of that power. So that makes, that makes sense. While I'm able to show the extremities of the brake function here without the loader and a heavy load, you will see some advantage to using the brakes even when you have the less than optimal braking configuration, right? When you have a heavy load on the front, you will still find that applying a little bit of brake while you turn, you know, just putting a little bit of pressure on the pedal while you turn will help the tractor to turn easier. And if you don't apply too much, you will keep from scuffing up the lawn surface as much as you would without it because you apply a little brake that puts a little pressure back here uh, on the lawn, but it reduces the pressure that that front tire is having to, to exert on the grass there. So uh, if you do it optimally, which takes practice, while you're turning, you'll be able to reduce the amount of grass that you might tear up or any kind of damage that you might do to the yard. So there are four names for these that I can come up with. Individual, steering, turning, independent brakes. Use whichever name you want, but try them out, guys. Um, if you haven't used them to this point, you've been missing out. It'll take a little bit of practice to get used to them, but the first thing is fold that brake lock over and don't use that again unless you're pulling some big trailer or wagon or something down hills and you want to make sure that you're getting both tires stopped uh, at the same time. Hope you found this helpful if you're a beginner. Just one of our occasional Tractor 101 videos. Thanks.
Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death.